Thank you, Dr. Neil. Dr. Neil, Dr. Zhong, IPCC members, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. It is an honor for me to be here this afternoon witnessing the fruition of this key symposium, which marks the 10th anniversary of the IPCC. The illustrious speakers have offered most thought-provoking perspectives and insightful comments on a wide range of important issues. May I take this opportunity to congratulate the IPCC for hosting this successful event. On behalf of the government, I wish to express my heartfelt gratitude to all those who have supported the series of celebrating the 10th anniversary of the IPCC. The past 10 years have seen significant political and social developments in Hong Kong. Prominent public organizations like the IPCC are inevitably under ever-increasing pressure to keep up with the ever-rising expectation of the community on all fronts, including efficiency in dealing with review of complaint cases, maintaining a transparent operation, and keeping a watch over the police's operation. I'm glad that over the past 10 years, IPCC's track record of excellent work has not only earned public trust, but has exceeded all public expectations. It has built up and maintained its impeccable reputation as a fair and impartial body with unsurpassed credibility. The credit for this must go to all past and present IPCC chairmen, members, observers, secretariat colleagues, as well as IPCC's working partners who have assisted the Council in its duties. As a key stakeholder in a tripartite relationship among the IPCC, the police, and the public, the police, back in 2009, has formulated a multi-pronged integrity management strategy to instill complaint prevention perspectives into the daily operation and training of police officers. Such effort has paid off. Compared with the situation in 2009, the number of complaints against police officers has kept declining from around 4,000 cases to in 2009 to 10 to around 1,600 reportable, reportable cases in 2018 to 19. Today's discussion is not just to reflect on what has been achieved, but also to plan and to look ahead. The three plenary sessions provided a platform for us to hear different views concerning the systems of balancing police powers. The plenaries have enlightened participants on the development of overseas police complaint systems and their reforms. They have also offered a most useful perspective on the interface between the police and the public and the balance in exercising police powers and respecting the legitimate rights of citizens. The plenaries also saw fruitful exchanges on ways to enhance public understanding of the IPCC's functions and explore the question of investigation powers. I may perhaps use four letters, I, P, C, and C, to sum up the key areas of relationship between the IPCC and the police. Let's start with the first letter, I, which I believe stands for integrity. The two-tier complaints handling system in Hong Kong, the role, functions, and powers of the IPCC, as well as the obligations of the police to comply with the recommendations made by the IPCC are all enshrined in the IPCC ordinance. The law sets out clearly and ensures that complaints against police conduct are handled by an independent and fair mechanism. The government is committed to upholding the integrity of the system in every possible way. The police understand the public's very high expectation on the conduct and discipline of their officers and have developed robust measures such as injecting an integrity management element in professional examinations and promotion exercises, strengthening training 
on conducting criminal investigation and disciplinary review on cases involving integrity issues, etc. They alert all officers of the need to maintain a high standard of integrity and discipline at all times. CAPO, operating independently from other police formations, have also been adopting different measures to improve the overall efficiency in implementing the complaint handling procedures. CAPO standardizes investigation standards, enhances public confidence in the police complaint system, and strengthens work on complaint prevention. The government has also ensured that the IPCC is suitably resourced to enable it to discharge its functions effectively. Compared to 2009 to 10, IPCC's annual subventions have increased by more than two times to around 96 million in 2019 to 20. And the size of its secretariat staff has also doubled to around 60 persons with the latest addition and strengthening of the units on research and public relations. The steady increase in funding and staffing support to the IPCC has helped ensure the smooth operation of the Council, enabling it to enhance integrity of the system on a continuous basis. The second letter is P, which stands for professionalism. Hong Kong has been internationally recognized as one of the safest cities in the world. The success of police policing work depends not only on their professional ability and relentless effort in combating crime, but also on public confidence in the police, which stems from the police day-to-day -day work in interaction with the public. In the past decade, the IPCC based on its rich experience in monitoring complaints against the police and the expert knowledge on the part of its chairman, members and observers, has made over 140 highly pertinent recommendations to the police. These recommendations, especially those related to large-scale public order events, attracted keen public and media interest, proved to be extremely useful to the police in refining their procedures and practices. The police will continue to work hard and to work hand in hand with the IPCC to scale new heights in its professional performance in pursuit of excellence. The third letter is C, which stands for communication. The promotion of public awareness of the role of the IPCC in the two-tier complaints handling system is a statutory function and key task of the IPCC. It is evident that the IPCC has excelled in this area. Through visiting district councils and schools, meeting with stakeholders and media representatives, publishing TV series, yearbooks, newsletters, regular detailed briefings for the press, etc., the IPCC has successfully enhanced public understanding of its work. The Council's public opinion surveys in recent years have recorded an upward trend in the public's net confidence towards it. The next letter is C, which I believe stands for consensus. In any society, police powers and how such powers are executed can be a potentially controversial issue. There is no hard and fast rule on what system in handling complaints against the police is a perfect system. But we can always strive to improve what we have and what we are doing at the present moment, while making sure that it meets its need. Generally, a good system to monitor and review police complaints handling must be one which fits the circumstances and aspirations of the community as well as balancing the role of the police vis-a-vis -vis the IPCC as its watchdog. Hong Kong is a city of divergent views, and this is what makes our city vibrant, <coughs> lively, and interesting. The IPCC, with 27 members, is a miniature of our community, in which every member is a forceful and independent voice in himself or herself. Under the capable lead of the chairman and staunch support of the Secretariat, the IPCC always emerges 
clear and loud as one voice, with consensus having been worked out and messages to the police and the public being conveyed in a clear and unequivocal manner. On this, I must congratulate the IPCC on a role well played and served. Last but not the least, I would like to once again thank the IPCC, especially Dr. Neil, the IPCC chairman, for having me this evening in this most meaningful event. I would also like to thank all the speakers and participants for their thoughts and wisdom in this key symposium. May I wish the IPCC every success in future. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Lai, and please take a seat off the stage first.